Hi guys, welcome back to the Aris tutorial. In this video, we're going to put everything together and make a working game. We're going to include certain features, such as switching scenes, modifying the player with items, using a QR code, and doing an entire playthrough of the game as the user would see it. So let's get started. After you've logged into your account, click New Game. We'll label this game Help the Ghost. Once you've created the game, go ahead and start to add your media. I'm going to upload all the media I have now so it's easily accessible later on. Once I have all my media uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and start my conversations. I'll create a new conversation labeled Conversation 1. Click Save and start to structure my conversation. I have already added the ghost and I'll connect his media now. So now whenever the ghost is speaking, his media will appear. The first thing that I want the ghost to say is, Hi, will you help me? And I'll click save. And I want the user's response to either be yes or no. So I'll delete bye bye and write yes. And instead of ending the conversation, I'll click say line. And I'll just click save and Eris will automatically create a new conversation line. Now that I have yes, I want to create a no option. So I'll go ahead and do that and click save. If the user selects yes, I want the ghost to say thank you. Make sure to always select the correct speaker. If the user says no, I want the, the ghost to say okay, bye. This will actually end the game. And since this isn't something that the user would actually say, I'll go ahead and put that in italics. Now for the game over, I have a fancy graphic that I want the user to see. So I'm going to add it as a character. So now when the user clicks game over, I'm going to make it say a line. And in that line, the speaker will now be game over. And now the user will see this game over graphic. Let's save that. The new prompt will be the end. And again, I'll put that in italics. On the other side, I want the prompt after thank you to be, what do you need? This is the user responding to the ghost. The ghost will say a new line. I specifically want the user to go to scan the QR code. So I'll let the user exit to the tab of the scanner. And this is the end of my first conversation. I have a starting point. I have two options and kind of two branches of where the conversation goes. And in each one, I make sure that I have a specific ending that makes sense. Now I'm going to create my new conversation. This will be conversation to the end. This conversation takes place after the user has scanned the code. The ghost is happy with the outcome. This conversation line is special because I'm going to modify the player. But in order to give them a new item, I have to go back to scenes. Under scenes, I'll create a new item and I'll change the media for the item. After I save that, I can go back to the conversation and modify the player with that item. Now all I have to do is end the conversation. And again for this, I want to show my special game over GIF. After I have both my conversations completed, I'm going to head back to my scenes to connect everything. In my starting scene, I want the conversation to start when the user clicks on a certain area on a map. So I'll add a trigger to the first conversation. To alter that trigger, I'm going to click on that conversation one and come to this right panel on scenes. I won't add any certain locks, 
but I will add the location. For the purposes of this game, I'm going to make it available anywhere by touch. I'll keep the icon the same, and this is what will appear on the user's end. Once I hit save, that location point is now done. Now I'm going to add another scene. Scene 2 will hold Conversation 2. In Conversation 2, I want this to start when the user scans a QR code. I'll label the QR code Trophy and hit Save. Once I scan this QR code, Conversation 2 will start. But at the moment, Starting Scene and Scene 2 are not connected. So what I'll have to do is add a switch scene to starting scene. And it needs to switch to scene 2. I'll click on the switch scene to alter what the locks are. I don't need starting scene to switch to scene 2 until conversation 1 is completed. So I'll go into the locks for this trigger, add a new lock, and change it so that when the player has already Exited conversation one that the scenes will change. Let's save that. Last, I'm going to go into the game settings and change a couple of things. Here on the right side, I can change the appearance of the icon that appears when you first open the game. I'll set this as one of my media images. And I'll also do the same for the media. You can also change the intro scene here. And you could set this visibility to the Ares client as published or private. If you set it to private, you can play it when you're logged into Ares on your phone. But if you set it to publish, other people that are on Ares can look up your game and play it. You can also set login QR codes and go to advanced settings. I also want to get rid of a few tabs that show up on the user's end because I'm not using some of those tabs. So I'll go to the game settings and click on tabs. I'm not using quests, so I'll go ahead and click on quests and click delete. And I'll also delete the decoder and the notebook. You can easily add these back in by clicking new tab and selecting one of these items. Now the game should be good to play.